Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And as always, it is an honour to be able to rise and represent the good people of Battle River Crowfoot in the House of Commons. And today I do so in, in, to enter into debate on what is ironically the, the, the fall uh, uh, fiscal update which a whole uh, host of people that I'm sure are watching and certainly many will ask the question, why are we debating uh, come springtime a bill that was tabled in the fall? Well, I have uh, uh, that same question and it comes down simply to this, Madam Speaker. While the Liberals tabled their budget a couple of weeks ago, which I will talk about uh, here in a moment, this, the fact that while it is spring, we are still debating the fall economic statement, it is a, it is a clear example of the utter incompetence that we see in this Liberal Party. They can not only manage their legislative agenda, they certainly cannot manage an economy. We are seeing debt spiraling out of control. We are seeing pain and suffering uh, in, in the lives of so many many Canadians, Madam Speaker. So that is a perfect example. And the reason why I wanted to start my speech emphasizing that, because when folks watch this, they'll look on the screen and they will see that it says Fall Economic Statement Implementation Act 2023. Yet here we are debating the budget after the, the and, and earlier today also debating the Budget Implementation Act 2024. Madam Speaker, highlighting the true incompetence and inability for that Prime Minister, those Liberals and their coalition partners that prop them up come, come, come storm or sunny day, their coalition partners are always there to stand with the Liberals propping up their corruption, their incompetence and ultimately the pain that Canadians are feeling from coast to coast. Madam Speaker, when it comes to what we're, the true root of what I hear as I travel across my constituency, related to both the fall economic statement, but also to the budget that was tabled here a couple of weeks ago. There is crime and chaos in our streets and gravel roads. You know, it's interesting, Madam Speaker, I, like I'm sure many MPs, certainly I hope the Liberals and the NDP do this, but I have what I affectionately refer to as my call list. Now, sometimes it can take some time to get through that call list because there's a whole host of people, the 110,000 or so people that I represent, that want to speak to me. And I find it incredibly important to actually speak with individuals that are... are, are of order, the Honourable Member for um, Aurora, Oak, uh, Rich, Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Sorry, it's it just... Thank uh, you, Madam Speaker. Yes. I'm, I'm just questioning the relevance of this speech oh to the motion, the motion that was put forward, which is to delete the short title of the Act and I'm trying to, I have a hard time trying to connect this to... I, uh, I, all the, obviously the Honourable Member recognizes that there is some leeway during speeches, uh, during speeches. However, I do want to remind members to make sure that they are actually speaking to the bill that is before the House. Um, so their speech should actually be in reference to that. Is there another point of order? The Honourable Member for New Westminster, Burnaby, or he's just standing, leaving... Okay, so no, the Honourable Member Battle River for Crowfoot. Madam Speaker, you know, I find it so interesting. You know, I was just talking about, as I was speaking to my constituents, and that member from Aurora, Rich, uh, 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 the Oak, Ridges, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill, that she would suggest that somehow the pain that Canadians are experiencing is not relevant to the discussion in this place. It is that ignorance, it is that true, the tr truly being so utterly out of touch that I, it's, it's almost difficult to find words. And why, Madam Speaker, I would suggest that she take notes when it comes to what I'm describing. And that's the actual need to speak to our constituents. The very basis of why this place exists is because we are to be representatives of the people, not elites that are imposing their vision upon a populace that don't have a say. No, Madam Speaker, those are days gone by, and while that may be the pursuit of that member and so many members of the Liberal Party, that is an absolutely unacceptable attitude to have for a member of the House of Commons, a place where the common people should have a voice. And Madam Speaker, I would suggest... 
for order. I want to remind the honourable member, um, you know, his his comments are actually uh, almost um, speaking about the individual in, itself. And I just want to remind members that they should be talking. Uh, they can they can debate about the government policies, about the party itself, but they shouldn't be attacking individual members. So I want to uh, uh, caution the honourable mem uh, member on. Uh, some of the comments that he has made because it's actually attacking the individual member. Uh, the, I'm assuming that that's what the Honourable Member was also getting up on the point of order at the same time that I was. So I would just caution the members to make sure that they speak to to the, to the bill, uh, and it is pretty wide. I uh, just did another check on that, but I also want to remind the member that, you know, that the attack shouldn't be on individuals themselves. It should be on either the policies or the government's um, uh, actions. So there you go. The Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Oh, sorry, I still have a point of order. The Honourable Member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. I would actually like to suggest that he did attack me. He did, was just not veering in that direction and made comments about my person and assumptions about what my motivation was. So I actually asked the speaker to ask him to retract those statements about me. It's the honourable member to retract his statements. On that point, madam. The on, uh, sorry, I now have another uh, point of order. Uh, the Honourable Member for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Well, yeah, thank you very much. On that same same point, Madam Chair, I mean, my, my colleague is just simply pointing out the government's general disdain for the general public, right? This is not a on this here, and I want to ask the Honourable. I'm, I'm going to indicate to the Honourable Member. I heard the comments. Uh, there was two of them actually, and so I just asked the Honourable Member to please withdraw those comments so that he can continue on with his speech. Uh, on the point of order, the Honourable Member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. And, uh, I, w I would request some clarity. I heard the comments as well. I was listening very closely, um, and he certainly did. He did call into the the, the knowledge of the uh, of the individual and. and you use the word ignorance, which is not unparliamentary. I think you'll find yeah, the Hansard is littered with the word. Uh, and and I, I did not hear a word that was unparliamentary. I would ask. Yes. Uh, no, and, and uh, so I did catch it the first time. Uh, however, I thought that the Honourable Member was, was changing, but it, it, there was a second time as well. And so I just want to remind the Honourable Member, I, I'm asking the Honourable Member just to withdraw his comment so he can go on with his uh, speech. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I withdraw the comments that have caused so much offence in this place. Well, River Crowfoot can continue with this speech. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I think that uh, the last number of minutes is just a demonstration of the chaos and uh, and and uh, uh, the 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 un, un inability for that Liberal government to accomplish anything. So, Madam Speaker, what I would suggest is that for every member of the Liberal Party, for every member of the New Democratic Party, to do what our job is, and that is to speak to Canadians. Because, Madam Speaker, when you speak to Canadians, you hear a story of pain. You hear a story of uncertainty. You hear stories where vehicles are being stolen from driveways, whether that be urban driveways in downtown Toronto, or whether that be gravel roads in rural Canada. Madam Speaker, the crime, the chaos, the corruption is becoming too much for so many Canadians to handle. And what's interesting, Madam Speaker, as, as those Liberals try to interrupt and cause, cast dispersions upon the so, so important debates that we need to have in this place, is that they forget the fact that we serve and we need to serve the people. They forget that. And what is so unfortunate is that the consequence of their forgetting that simple fact, we may disagree on policies, and I've said this before, Madam Speaker, and I will say it again, there was a time when you could look at the government in power and understand that you may not agree with all of their policies, but you still had respect for the institutions and the offices to which those individuals held. Well, Madam Speaker, increasingly I'm hearing from constituents that have lost respect for the institutions. They do not trust not only the Prime Minister, but the office to which he holds and the direction to which this government is leading the country. Because Canadians are suffering, Canadians are hurting, and it's, it's, I hear it uh, constantly. And I mentioned my call list, 
And, and as I was preparing for this speech, Madam Speaker, I was scrolling through that call list, and you'll understand my passion when I've heard from so many Canadians that are hurting so desperately in need of relief, in need of hope, in need of somebody that can provide leadership in this country. But instead, they have a government that intends to divide, a government that intends to distract, a government that instead of being responsible is the definition of irresponsible. So, Madam Speaker, uh, the, the, the passion that myself and I know so many of my Conservative colleagues are expressing is that of, of, of amplifying the voices of Canadians who have been forgotten by those Liberals and those New Democrats that have abandoned the very basis of what it should be to be a Member of Parliament. So, Madam Speaker, when we look at the budget, and similar in frame to that of which we see the fall economic statement, we see that the Liberals show that there is not a responsible path back to spending within its means. And we see the consequences of that. It's not just adding a few extra bonds that the Bank of Canada has to figure out. And those are complicated financial mechanisms that so many don't understand the specifics of. But when it comes down to it, the consequence is this. It, rise, it raises costs. It's the same thing with the high tax agenda to which those members perpetuate. It is raising costs for Canadians. We hear so much about how, how, how the Liberals support quadrupling the carbon tax, increasing taxes at every turn. Yet the consequence of that, Madam Speaker, is that Canadians are paying more. Canadians are paying more and they are hurting as a result. Madam Speaker, we see that, uh, that there is, has, has been a, a, a complete and utter abandonment of common sense within this place. And the result is, is that the country is moving in a direction that certainly Canadians did not vote for. You know, it's interesting, Madam Speaker, as I, like so many MPs, travel across the country, whether that's in airports, in my uh, uh, commute across the country, or whether that be uh, uh, th the messages that we get when folks are watching the proceedings in this place. And increasingly, Madam Speaker, we hear how they, they including some individuals that, that, that have shared that while they voted Liberal or New Democrat in the past, they won't do it again because they see how what they were told is not what is being offered. And the clear proof of that is exactly what we have before us in both the fall economic statement and the budget that was debated earlier today. And in fact, Madam Speaker, we see how there, there, there's been this very interesting trend as of late where the NDP are criticizing their, their coalition confidence and supply partners over there, yet they've said that they will continue to prop up the crime, corruption, corruption and chaos and out-of-control spending. We see how the Prime Minister seems to be quick to point out some of the challenges the country is facing. You know, what's interesting, Madam Speaker, is that he fails to acknowledge that for nearly nine years he has been the captain of a ship. And Madam Speaker, what is interesting, to use and further that ship analogy for just a moment longer, is the fact that when a captain starts steering a ship, what may be a small course correction in the beginning can result in massive pain and directionless as the ship continues to sail on. When you do not take uh, 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 responsibility for the maintenance of that ship, it begins to fall apart. And while the captain standing at the wheel can blame everybody but himself, the buck stops at the top. The buck stops with the one who's in charge. And what is so uh, interesting is the Prime Minister has, as of late, had these revelations that Canadians are hurting. And I agree with him on that. But here's the reality. It is the policies of that NDP Liberal coalition that have caused so much hurt. So then so often, Madam Speaker, we hear from the other side and many Canadians say, well, what would the Conservatives do differently? Well, Madam Speaker, we have a record that we can be proud of, shepherding uh, the country through incredible financial difficulties while understanding fiscal responsibility. We have so much uh, uh, potential that exists in 
in terms of, <clears throat> of the ability and the hope of the future of this country. So, Madam Speaker, I look forward to being able to respond to some questions here, because when it comes to the future of our country, the future is bright, but it seems that the solution needs to include getting rid of it.